everyone and welcome back to another video the tea on NPD and relationships so of course before we get started I want to invite you to hit that subscribe button hit that follow button and come follow me as we discover our destinies to my new subscribers and new followers listen y'all welcome to my tribe and family at large welcome back Thank you for visiting my media resource and finding value in something that I have to say. I appreciate your time. And if you like the content that I am bringing to you, why don't we let the YouTube community know? By simply hitting that like button, it gives our tribe and our family right here the greatest opportunity to grow. So, of course, I want to mention that I am a certified professional life coach. If you are desiring life coaching services, please email me at the T on NPD at gmail.com. That is the T on NPD at gmail.com. Also, I would like to invite you all to our Thursday nights live, y'all, our Thursday night lives right here on the channel at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That is 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Listen, y'all, it is a great time, amazing energy, great enlightening conversation for, listen, mental and spiritual elevation. Come on here, somebody. I'm talking about revelation, you name it, and we got it popping off, everything that's good and wholesome okay for us here on this channel y'all yes so i want to invite you to the thursday night lives mark your calendars i hope to see you there also i want to draw your attention to the community tab of the channel we have some great information in the community tab the cruise information is located there and also my pricing um, menu for life coaching services is also located in the community tab last but not least our merchandise t on mpd merchandise is lo located right here on the channel please visit the store right here on the channel brought to you by none other than teespring y'all so get your merch today so let's get into this video, y'all. Yes, yes, let's talk about it. The burning question the narcissist always wanted to know or wanted to ask you and did ask you, okay? And there is a reason for it. And I haven't heard, I don't know if I've seen any uh, videos as of late on this particular subject, but I did want to cover it because as you know, I always tell you all, I want you to be sharp, okay? I want you to know all of the tactics, as many as I can think of and gather information on for strategy, okay? So we can stay out of the, and listen, out of the orbit and the stratosphere of these birds, okay? They are under our feet. I told you we're going to keep our foot in their chest. Yes, honey. Yes. So, I know you're probably asking, well, what question is it? Yeah, well, you know, listen. The narcissist is one that basically wants to control everything about you. What you wear, what you eat, you know, how, uh, uh, what you say, uh, how you feel, what you even think. Okay, so the question a lot of times, and I'm sure that you all have heard it in many different forms, but the way that it was always usually asked to me was, what's on your mind? Yes, that's it. What's on your mind? So a lot of times the narcissist will, they will throw, I like to call them little Thought, th little thought provoking hints out there, subliminals. Okay, they love to deal in subliminals, y'all. Yeah, so they like to they like to throw things out there. Okay, to get you thinking. Now the reason they do this is because they know most of you are critical thinkers. Okay, and and that's why they're with you because they know that if they can influence your emotion, that you're going to find a reason and a way to critically rationalize 
you know, the abuse and the nonsense, okay? That's why they seek to control your emotions first. They want to capture that, okay? Because that that is where they want to deal in the realm of the emotion and the heart. Because if they can capture that, then they can use that to control your thought process instead of it being the other way around, okay? Because it's actually supposed to work in the reverse. You're supposed to think rather than react. But see, the narcissist wants you to, they want to deal with you in the realm of emotion so you can do it backwards. You can react like they do and then think. Okay, so then that is a that is a way that they will always keep you off balanced. Yeah, come on here, somebody, birds. Okay, they will always it's a way to keep you emotionally off balance, mentally unstable, and feeling like you are literally walking on eggshells all the time because you are trying to figure out what is going to happen next because you know they walk around with a mask on all day every day okay they walk around with a mask on and see they want to know what are you thinking all the time because they want to control that thought flow process okay so the term is called thought policing okay and the dictionary it, the dictionary actually uh, defines the term as thought police. So this is what dictionary.com says about thought police. It says a group of people with totalitarian views on a given subject who constantly monitors, get it? Constantly monitors others for any deviation from prescribed thinking. Let me read that again. A group of people with totalitarian views on a given subject who constantly monitor others for any deviation from prescribed thinking. Okay? That is. So basically, when you are in a addiction ship with a narcissist, the narcissist wants to control every single Thing that you do now you are asked this question and I know a lot of you watching this video can remember the many times you were asked what are you thinking about what's on your mind what 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 what, what, what do you want to talk about or do you want to talk about something they are they are constantly this is what this is what is called or known as thought policing okay they are wanting to monitor what you're thinking about. So the only way they can really monitor that is to ask you that question, okay? And the reason they do that is that they want to know constantly what your thought flow process is like because they know that they are constantly doing things to affect your thought flow, your thought flow process, okay? They know they're constantly doing the birds, Okay, skunks, they are constantly having you tore up mentally and emotionally, and it is by design. So in order to make sure that their abuse tactics are working on you mentally, okay, in order to make sure that the abuse tactics are working on you mentally, they have to police your thoughts, okay? And this is how they do it, by constantly asking this question. And your answer will let them know which place they need to go, what realm they need to start digging in, or if you, if you sound too if you sound too sure, if you sound too solid on your conversation, then they will employ some abuse tactics. And baby, let me tell you, they will open it and let it go. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, listen, they are going to start some serious chaos and they are going to start, I'm talking about the subliminals, the subliminals are going to come nonstop. And not, uh, not only in conversation, but if you have social media, they are going to get on the social media. They are going to start sending sub limbs on social media. They have to have control of your, or they have to have control and they have to know what is going on in the thought flow process. This is how controlling they are. 
Okay. So when they're, when they're asking you these questions, this is why they want to know and see the strategy and what you have to start doing now that you know that they are actually policing your thoughts because some of you are not even out of this situation with the narcissist. Some of, some of you are actually having to deal with them in families. You know, it's not necessarily a romantic relationship. It is a family member type situation. Or it may be a business partnership or something like that. And when you have, so basically it is not a situation that you're going to be able to just cut off is what I'm saying. Okay. Now, if you're in it in a romantic sense, you know, there are things, if there are no children or no other ties involved, you can listen, you can make a clean break and be thankful to God that you could do that. Okay. But the thing that you have to start understanding and when you are dealing with a narcissist is that your thoughts need to be kept as, listen, I'm talking about as incognito as possible, okay? When they start asking you what's on your mind, what are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? You need to change the subject. You need to find something and, and see, they hate it when you do that. Because, see, they want to control the conversation and they want to control what you're thinking. But, see, when they come out and ask you a question, you have to be, listen, when you get this information and you know what's happening, you change the subject. This is strategy for overcoming the thought policing. And, see, even if you think that you might be dealing with a toxic person. See, toxic people are, listen, a part of the toxicity is them wanting to control you just unnaturally. Okay? Being able to control things about you that you should not want to control about another human being. We are all our own separate entities from each other. A narcissist doesn't feel like you are a separate entity from them. Sharks, okay? Stonks and birds, okay? I told you they'd be walking around with them shark teeth and bad breath and everything. I'm telling you, these birds are something else. And they will get right down to the whole mental perspective. They want to know everything about every single thing that you're thinking, doing, and anything else that you have going on, okay? So it's important that you know about this thought policing because you need to learn how to skillfully transition out of that conversation and flip the question back on them. And here's a good tactic. This is one that I use. When I was asked the question and it was, and I, and I really, started to hone in on what was happening. This is the question I asked when that, when I was asked, okay, so, so, so what, what are you thinking? What's on your mind? And I would come back with this. What do you want to be on my mind? What would you like for me to be thinking about? See, they don't like that. They don't like that. And then they'll tell you something like, well, you don't answer a question with a question. And then, you know, when you get real bold, like I did, and said, well, you know, I just didn't want to answer the question. So I asked you the question. So if you want to answer it, go right ahead. But that should be your clue that I'm not interested in answering your question. Now, if you're dealing with a, a with a narcissist that is pretty, you know, that's pretty violent or has a bad temper, I would not recommend flipping the question back on them. But if you are in a situation and you really want to, if you really want to, you know, kind of get yourself out of that and, and flip it back on them. Yeah, it's going to irritate them because they don't want to be asked the questions. They want to ask the questions and get all the answers. But you got to know that this is another, uh, this is another monitoring technique that they use on, on their, their victims or their targets in order to monitor the thought flow. Cause see what they're taking in is data y'all. This is what they're doing. They're taking in data. And every time they ask you that question it's after they have done something crazy, something just, I mean, totally off the wall or said something, sent some sublims on a uh, social media that they know you saw. Okay. They know you saw it. Okay, they put it out there for you to see. 
And see, what they want to do is they want to monitor your thought process so they can see how much more abuse, I mean, how tight they need to pull up on that rein or how loose they need to let it go. You understand what I'm saying? So what you got to do is you have to become, your, your location needs to be unidentifiable. Okay, your 20 needs to come off the map. There it is. Okay, your 20 needs to come off the map. What is your 20? Your location. Your thought location needs to be nowhere near the narcissist. You have to figure out how to transition and flip that question. And the best way to do it, the best way to do it is to cleverly change the subject. When they ask you what's on your mind, you just start talking about something. If you want to if you want to talk about something else or just say, you know, I, I really don't choose to discuss that. And whatever is on my mind is whatever is on my mind, but I don't choose to discuss that at this time. Or just, you know, can't it just say to the narcissist, I, you know, listen, I'd like to change the subject because I really don't want to talk about what's on my mind right now. See, because the thought policing is for them to con continue to gather data on you, okay? And how your thoughts work, how your thought flow process goes. And all they're doing is collecting this data, y'all, so they can further abuse you and manipulate you. And I'm talking about really tighten up on you for the most, for the, I mean, listen, for the most amount of fuel that they can draw out of you, okay? And the most amount and the most control that they can have on you, okay? Because you they already try to control your physical. They, you know, they try to control your, your emotional and they show enough want to control your mental, okay? This is what they want to do. So I wanted to bring this topic because I want you to be sharp and I want you to understand what's happening in the realm of emotion and your mental thought flow process and how it relates to how the narcissist get, collects and gathers data to abuse you further. Okay? This is what they do. So I wanted to bring this topic to you all. And if you haven't hit that like button, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. And until the next video, you all, I will see you all at the top. Ciao.